Welcome to Commsverse. This session is called Best Practices for Deploying Microsoft Teams Devices and is presented by Adam Jacobs. And I'll hand it over to you now, Adam. Thanks, Adam. Uh, my name is Adam Jacobs, uh, another Adam. Uh, and I'm uh, I'm not unfortunately going to be joined as far as I'm aware by Jeff today. Um, so I will be taking this session. Um, but Jeff and I have uh, jointly created some content. We both work at, uh, at Poly um, as principal Microsoft architects, uh, and we pulled together a number of items um, that will help you guys uh, with deployment of Teams devices. Um, and a lot of this information has come back from um, our own experiences, um, things that we've, we've come into contact with directly, working with a number of customers like yourselves um, who are deploying devices um, with Teams uh, and, and that are connecting into uh, Teams in the cloud. So I'm going to go through um, a number of different uh, categories I'm going to walk through today. So first of all, I'm going to talk about uh, Windows-based Teams devices or Microsoft Teams Room. Um, I'm also going to give you guys a little insight into some of the future uh, Teams room systems that are coming from Poly. Um, and then we're going to spend some time on Android based devices. So the phones, collaboration bars. Um, now these are these are obviously all Microsoft categories. Um, and I have got some product names here which are Poly specific, but um, please don't think that this is only going to be of value to you if you're deploying poly specific devices because this will be generic uh, enough that it will help you with uh, other devices from other vendors as well. So um, let's start off with Microsoft Teams Room. Um, I'm going to start off with imaging. Um, and, and I'm going to assume that most people here know about the Microsoft Teams Room application. Um, creating accounts and all that good stuff. Um, so today I want to I really talk a bit more about um, some of the other things that are not as well known. So first of all here, imaging options. Um, and uh, one of the things uh, that we've done, and we've done this jointly with Lenovo. So folks that have the Lenovo Hub 500 right now um, has the same very similar approach as well, which is um, a push button reset. Um, or push button recovery, excuse me. And um, this is basically um, leveraged via a recovery partition that is on the device itself. Um, so if you have that recovery partition and you have a Lenovo device or, or a Poly MTR with a Lenovo uh, compute, then you have the ability to press 11, uh, F11 at boot, so you need an externally attached USB keyboard. Um, and then you can select troubleshoot, reset PC, remove everything and just remove my files. Um, and that reset will essentially take all of the, the image information on the recovery partition and restore it back as if the whole systems come from factory. So that's a great, great recovery uh, capability. The second one is to use Lenovo Cloud Deploy uh, or LCD. Um, and this is typically used when uh, the recovery partition is just not present or it's damaged. So, for example, you've had a hard drive failure um, and that is a, an online tool that can be used um, that allows you to sign in and restore the partition completely um, and support folks at Lenovo or at Poly would give you that, that login information to go and restore all of that information from the cloud. The third option is to use Microsoft's um, Create SRS Media PowerShell script. Um, and this is particularly useful for enterprises that want to create their own uh, enterprise image as opposed to using a stock one from uh, other MTR vendors. Um, and with that, there are other applications um, that get downloaded and drivers that get downloaded specific to that Microsoft Teams room. And that is a requirement for all Microsoft Teams room vendors to, to put their drivers um, into uh, this script so that, that enterprises can create their own image. 
The next thing I was going to talk through, and this is uh, specific to our uh, Microsoft Teams Room solution, um, we've um, developed a number of uh, specific tools um, that are embedded on the system. Um, the first one is um, to ensure that when you guys pull logs from the system uh, and you use the Microsoft defined process to do that, which you can see in that PowerShell script down below, um, is that our logging service pushes any logs from the poly system uh, into the, the correct directories for that PowerShell script to pull everything into one single package. Um, and that's important. So if you're working with Microsoft support or poly support, it means that we have all of the, the packages uh, and support log information together so we can troubleshoot either the Microsoft problems or poly related problems all in one go. The second component um, is the poly display manager. Um, now our solution is display link based. Um, so what that means is, is that when it's connected via USB, it will enumerate as a display adapter um, and to make sure that everything works correctly and the uh, console is shown on the right device, we have to make sure that the main monitor is set to the display adapter or the virtual display adapter that we're using. So that's the second component that we include there to make sure that that uh, functions correctly. And that also gets executed at, at boot time uh, when the system is, uh, is loaded. Um, before I move off of uh, Microsoft Teams rooms, um, one of the things I thought was useful was just to show you guys some of our bundles that are coming. Um, and these will be coming uh, hopefully by the end of this month stroke, the month after, um, and, uh, and it's July right now in case people are, are watching this back as a recording. Um, and um, the base bundle, as you can see here, is the, the G10T. Uh, that uh, includes everything but audio and video peripherals. So if you have existing uh, speaker packs um, or mics, um, et cetera, that you want to connect, that's a good option. Um, the G40T um, is for that sort of small to medium sized room, which includes the studio, which is our, our USB soundbar. Uh, and then the third one, uh, the G80T, will be launching uh, later this summer. This is for much larger rooms, uh, which includes the, uh, the Trio C60 and also the Eagle Eye Director 2 camera. So now I'm going to transition onto phones um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the, um, the Android device management architecture that uh, not only Poly has on our phones, but also this is the same or very similar architecture that you'd have on other Teams devices that are leveraging um, the Android uh, architecture. So uh, I'm just going to build this out here. Um, there are um, three uh, or four components in total on each device. So there's obviously the Teams application or Teams APK, um, which runs natively on the phone uh, or the collab bar. Um, and then within that, there are a number of other applications. So one is uh, Microsoft's admin agent, um, and that obviously provides the necessary protocol to talk to the Teams admin center, um, ask for updates, push provisioning information. So I'll push um, device name, push um, IP address, uh, check for updates, uh, push logs, all those sorts of things. Um, then there's the company portal. Uh, and the company portal is an application that's used for adding the device to Azure Active Directory, um, checking for com uh, compliance policies, um, and also uh, conditional access rules uh, when doing provisioning. Um, and it also does the authentication as well. The last piece that you see there is the partner agent. And this is the OEM admin agent, which is developed by each of the OEMs um, to actually facilitate communication between the device 
and its um, native way of communicating to the Microsoft admin agent. So think of it as like um, uh, like a, a some kind of uh, bus that translates between Microsoft um, and the OEM's, you know, native uh, provisioning. And as you all know, you know, everyone has their own provisioning. They have different XML files and, uh, and REST APIs. And, and this partner agent is developed as a way to standardize and speak to the Microsoft admin agent in a you know, single recognized uh, mechanism. So all of this is happening on the devices. Um, it's also communicating to Teams Admin Center and together these things can be deployed to the phone um, individually or um, as a bundle, as a part of the OEM's firmware. So for example, if you guys downloaded um, the latest um, Trio or CCX firmware bundle, it would include um, all of these uh, applications as a part of that firmware bundle, and they would have all been tested together by both um, Poly um, or any other OEM and uh, with by Microsoft also. So next up, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Microsoft MDM. Um, and this is an area which comes up a lot. Um, a lot of people get confused by it um, because of the fact that uh, Intune is used as a protocol um, to send configurations back and forth. Um, devices, or more specifically Teams devices, will show up in uh, Microsoft's MDM as um, generic Android devices or uh, administrator admin, sorry, enterprise administrator devices. Um, and because of that, um, they may get caught by specific types of uh, compliance rules or conditional access policies. Um, and quite often, I am asked by a number of customers, well, hey, you know, I, I can't deploy your Polytrio. Um, it won't let me register the device or I'm getting an error. Um, and, and the real reason why that's happening is because there's probably some kind of compliance policy or conditional access rule in place, which is blocking it from happening. Um, and again, going back to what I mentioned earlier, that's because these devices are all Android based. And as far as Microsoft's MDM is concerned, they're all uh, Android smartphones at this point. And if there is a compliance policy defined, then they get applied in the same way. So there is a number of workarounds um, that can be used. Um, and I'm going to go through two of them. Um, the first one, um, which uh, gets commonly used, is to create um, a device group. Um, and within that device group, uh, you can assign a number of different uh, accounts uh, that are specific to the device accounts. So for example, if you were deploying um, uh, a Teams uh, conference uh, phone device, you may have uh, a specific account that's allocated to that room. So putting that account into a device group and then um, excluding that group from any conditional access rules is probably something you can do on um, a, a, a group device or a shared device because it's less of risk. Now, for personal devices like IP phones or IP desk phones, that becomes more of a problem. Um, but when it comes to shared devices, this is definitely a good workaround. Uh, the other option is, is that you can add the device rather than the account. Um, the only problem with that, and this is something that I've seen quite often, is that the account um, typically gets registered after the fact. So if you wanted to add a device into a group, you'd have to go through registration uh, at least one time, wait for Azure Active Directory to be propagated with the device, so that you can then add it to this uh, this group. 
So be, be aware that that approach can cause some problems. Another, another option here, um, and this is uh, another workaround. This one has come um, from, uh, from Microsoft, is to put in place um, a tenant-wide compliance policy override for uh, Microsoft Teams devices. And these are devices which have gone through certification. So the device list is managed by Microsoft. Um, so if a new device was added, it would automatically pick up these rules. Um, and the compliance policies that would not get applied to the devices, you can see in that table on the right there. So um, threat level is, uh, is ignored. Uh, Google Play services uh, is ignored. Um, Up-to-date security provider is ignored. Um, minimum OS version. Um, so some, some devices are running lower versions of Android. Um, Passcode requirements, so group devices typically don't have passcodes on them, um, whereas uh, personal devices do. Uh, and then encryption. Um, Microsoft's um, uh, MDM encryption, in encrypted device check, looks specifically for um, file-based. Um, and this is applicable to devices also that have a passcode set. So for example, if you have a conference phone and that conference phone uh, has full disk encryption and there is no, no device code set or pin code set more specifically, then it would fail that check. So by putting in this workaround, um, you can automatically remove all these checks across your tenant for Teams certified devices. And to do that, uh, it can be enabled in Graph uh, in Graph Explorer and the commands to do that, um, to enable it and to disable it are listed on this slide. Um, and the slides will obviously be posted after this presentation. So that's another, another workaround um, worth noting. Um, the other thing I hear of quite often is, uh, hey, we've got Trio um, 88 or 8500 uh, we've been told that those devices uh, are being removed for support. Um, but so they will go into sustained engineering mode um, from August 1st. Um, that is due to the fact that they're running Android 4.4 or KitKat. Um, that does not mean devices will stop working. They will continue to work. It's just that they won't get new Teams uh, feature updates. Um, as far as them working and having the sort of um, you know, maintenance updates required to keep them online, that will still continue beyond uh, August 1st. Uh, the other thing that comes up is um, Trio um, 88 and 8500 can also be uh, enumerated as a rooted device. Um, and this actually is happening because of the specific Android um, signing signature that's being used by Polly. Um, this is going to be addressed in August, September timeframe. Um, so if your IT admins or your security admins are a bit nervous about this, um, you can let them know that any workaround that's put in place for the router device check uh, is something that will need that can be removed uh, in the future. Um, another thing which is um, relatively new, I think this actually became available uh, last week, was uh, automatic device updates. Um, so this is now giving you guys the ability to go in to the Teams Admin Center and uh, specifically uh, set an automatic update frequency. So you can say, I want it as soon as it's available, um, 30 days after release or 90 days after release. And you can see the new menu option there. Um, and this is obviously applicable to both uh, IP phones, including conference phones, uh, and the collab bars. So they all share the same architecture from a, a manageability standpoint. 
Some other things uh, I wanted to go over are um, Teams IP phone policies. Um, this was launched uh, a little while back, I want to say around September time frame from memory. Um, and you can see the, the build where this was uh, introduced uh, above there. Uh, so that's uh, August build. Um, and in there, there were some new uh, sign in modes that were added. Um, so there's um, a personal mode uh, or user sign in. Um, and this basically includes all features within the Teams IP phone application. Um, shared mode or meeting sign in. Uh, this is where you would sign in um, and you would only see meetings uh, that are available in the UI. Um, and then uh, last one is uh, common area uh, mode um, or common area phone sign in. And you can see the UI there adapt, adapts uh, when that policy is, is granted to, to those users. Um, in all of these modes, you can enable and disable the search uh, box that you see on the on the top right there, that magnifying glass. Um, and when a new tenant is provisioned, the default global policy is for user sign in. So all features are, are available by default. There are some new policies that are in the works um, that Microsoft is is working on, um, one of which is uh, a policy to allow or deny uh, video on devices. Um, so this would basically give you the ability to prevent uh, outgoing or incoming video usage. Um, and obviously that gives uh, tenant admins a way to reduce the bandwidth to all of the team's devices um, where, where applicable. Um, there's an example here. Um, so in this example, uh, you can see I've created a new uh, CS Teams IP phone policy. I've given it a name, which is uh, essentially CAP Search Disabled, uh, which is basically a, a common area phone policy with Search Disabled. Uh, I've set the sign-in mode in this case, obviously it's a common area phone sign-in because it's a common area account. And I've also allowed uh, Search to be enabled. So I've got Search common area phone enabled. Once that's configured, um, I can then go ahead and I can assign that policy by granting the CS IP phone policy to a specific uh, account. Uh, and you can see the account being, uh, uh, being or the example being used there and what I would type to do that. Uh, next up, um, another feature um, which is available. Uh, this has been available for, for some time now. Um, this was available around, uh, I want to say, beginning or towards uh, certainly Q1 last year. But this is the ability to enable users for Call Park. Um, the icon is disabled for Call Park by default but it doesn't work unless you configure the call park policy, um, which is not enabled by default. So bear in mind, if the icon isn't doing much uh, or it's failing, then you need to go through these uh, setup steps. Uh, so creating a policy uh, and allowing call park. So setting it to true, um, granting it to your call park users or everyone um, and uh, that will then allow that function, that feature to, to start to, to work. Um, just to talk a little bit about um, Microsoft Teams devices, which are uh, fitting within the collaboration bar category, um, in this case, specific to our, the, the Poly uh, Studio X, um, so the Studio X, um, we support multiple ways to control the device. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, one is to use a remote control. Another is to use a touch screen. Um, and then the other ways in which it can be used is with um, uh, the TC8 touch controller. Um, now the TC8 touch controller is paired to the Studio X uh, and it gets paired over the network. Um, and once it's paired, you can see the uh, the UI that gets displayed on the device. 
Um, the update that gets delivered from the Teams Admin Centre includes both the studio uh, software um, and also the TC8 software. So you can update both from the Teams Admin Centre. The Teams Admin Centre is used by default uh, to pull updates for the, uh, the Studio X. Um, and you can see there that the default option is Microsoft Teams device management. And this is in the device management settings within the web UI. If you want, you can alternatively choose your own server. So this could be a web server. It could be used. Uh, it could be um, our PDMS offering, um, FTP, um, or you can put it from the public Polycom support site as well. But the default, as I mentioned, is the Teams device management. So I'm finishing um, slightly early. Um, I am available to take some questions. Um, I believe we've got a, a breakout meeting scheduled. Um, I'll be on there after this. Uh, if anyone wants to speak live, they've got a specific um, poly question. Uh, I'm also hoping to join the booth at some point tomorrow as well. But thank you hey, very Adam. much for joining the session. Hey, Adam, uh, we do yeah. have a few questions that came in through the Q&A panel. Um, oh, OK, great. So yeah, so I'd like to have you uh, address them really quickly. Uh, the first one, um, it came in that says for Android devices, is it recommended to register them in Intune? Um, so Android devices, um, automatically get registered um, into Intune. So essentially, when you guys go into the Teams Admin Center, more specifically the device sections that you see in there, um, all of that information is being populated via the Intune um, protocols, right? And the, and the admin agent on the Teams devices is also um, uh, a variant of the, the Intune agent. Now, if you want to then manage that device over and above of what is available in the Teams Admin Center, then you would need to use Microsoft's MDM uh, platform uh, or Intune, and you need the additional licenses to be able to do that. Teams Admin Center management, that comes you know, without any additional licenses uh, other than your Teams licenses. Um, but if you want anything more granular, then you need Microsoft MDM. OK, great. And then another follow up or another question, not a follow up, but uh, is a poly. It's more poly specific. It says, where do you see poly PDMS playing a role for managing CCX phones in Teams mode? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, so the way we we really sort of look at this is, um, you know, once you put the device or you un you unbox the device and you put it on the network, there are a number of things that need to happen to put that device in the right state whereby a user can walk up to it and sign in. Um, and so we would see things like PDMS um, or RPRM, which is our Real Presence Resource Manager, um, and in the future, PolyLens as a way to put that device in the right state whereby it's ready for a user to come out and walk up to it and sign it in with their Teams account. Until such time, you know, Microsoft can do things like, you know, um, zero touch provisioning. Um, so, you know, that those types of ac um, actions could be pushing a firmware update to the device to make sure it's running the latest and greatest code because it's shipped from the factory with something that's not very new. Um, it could also ensure that the firmware updates are, instead of being delivered directly from the cloud, they're coming from uh, your local area network because these firmware updates get big. Um, in the case of collaboration bars, they can vary from you know one and a half gig to two gigs. <laughs> um, so having all of those devices reaching out to the web is probably not ideal. Um, so there's a benefit there. And then also ensuring things like, you know, the date, time, certificates, 
etc. All of that good stuff is is set to the device uh, or pushed to the device correctly. Um, but once the device is signed in and it's up and running, we expect customers to use uh, you know mainly the Microsoft uh, management tools. Awesome. Those were the, the two questions uh, that okay. had come in. Um, just for everybody who is attending right now, um, I have posted the breakout session. If you have specific questions that you'd like to ask Adam, uh, you can go, go to the link. It's goteams.fans slash BRK163. Um, and Adam will stick around for there uh, for a little bit. And then uh, and then I know this will get posted very quickly as well. So thanks, Adam, and very much appreciate you uh, presenting at Comms First. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Awesome.